So again, good morning. Thank you all for being here. Um, I'm Tierra Bond, if I haven't met you yet, the founder of Take Charge Consulting and then an organizer with One Million Cups. Um, so we meet here virtually um, Wednesdays at 9 a.m. And then the second Wednesday of the month, we meet in person, which I'll give you guys a little bit more info on. Um, in the meantime, make sure that you have our link tree saved. This will give you access to anything you need to know about One Million Cups Seattle, um, the Zoom link, the in-person meetup um, link, all of that. Just make sure to save, save that. Um, so what we are about, so One Million Cups was created um, to provide community for entrepreneurs, um, a safe place for us to share ideas, um, offer feedback, ask for help, um, and just support each other in the entrepreneurship journey, whether you're an entrepreneur or not. Um, and a couple differences between One Million Cups and other communities, we, um, our focus is presentations, not pitches. Um, we're all about connecting and not, um, not networking. So truly building those, those connections in that community. Um, we're ran by the community, um, thanks to our organizers and our sponsors. And we make it a huge um, intent to be radically and intentionally inclusive. Um, so this is the One Million Cups Seattle chapter. There's over 100 other chapters throughout the states. Um, you can attend different One Million Cups. Um, we all meet at 9 a.m. Um, in the respective time zone. So you could go to a Florida 1MC at 6 a.m. our time, whatever floats your boat. <laughs> I've definitely done that. This morning I was um, um, in Tampa virtually watching One Million Cups. So it's always fun to go check out different chapters. So to sum it up, One Million Cups, we are about education, presentations, and connections. We feel that with these three things, it really provides that support system um, and community that entrepreneurs need. Um, so like I said, the second Wednesday of every month is when we meet in person. Um, so currently we're meeting at Expansive, which is a um, co-working slash office space in Pioneer Square. Um, so April 13th, next Wednesday, we will be meeting um, there and we'll post the, the link in the chat so that you can register. Make sure to RSVP just because we want to um, keep COVID precautions in mind and, and um, limit our attendance to U45. A special thanks to our sponsors, um, Method Customization and McLaughlin Method. Like I said, this is um, a community that's ran by the community. So if we need sponsors to pay for things like our link tree and our email campaigns and all of that. So a special thank you to our sponsors as well as our volunteers. Um, so we are missing Adele, which is our newest um, community organizer. And um, so we all kind of come together to bring our, our different talents, our different energies together to make sure that these events um, happen in the first place, but then also run, run smoothly um, and effectively. And we're always looking for more volunteers. So a couple ways to get involved. Um, you can volunteer a specific task. So it could be something that you are interested in practicing on for your business. So for example, hosting. Um, I host workshops in my, in my own business, but being a volunteer with One Million Cups allows me to kind of practice those hosting and presenting skills. So if there's anything specific that you're thinking you could offer to the community, um, or that you want to kind of sharpen your skills on, definitely email us and let us know and we can see how we can, how we can make that work. So what to expect today? Um, we started with a little bit of coffee and conversation and my, um, my cold tea, <laughs> but we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna hear from Sheila, um, her six minute entrepreneurship, entrepreneur presentation. And then we will go into Q&A, so 20 minutes of Q&A, and then we'll do a little more connecting um, in breakout rooms after Sheila's presentation. 
So a few tips on being a supportive listener during Sheila's presentation. Uh, we wanna limit distractions. Um, I am the queen of multitasking. So um, I force myself to take notes during the presentation so that I don't get into my emails or something else. And that way my focus and energy is 100% on the presentation. Um, but then just taking notes on, you know, what stands out to you, what you wanna learn more about the presentation, anywhere you can offer feedback or your expertise. Um, in during the Q&A, we want to use, um, avoid the shoulds. So instead of saying you should do this, just, you know, kind of phrase it as have you thought about or what about X, Y, Z. Um, and during the Q&A, we'll use the, um, the raise hand feature, or you can type it in the chat. But for the raise hand, you'll just go down to the reaction, do the raise hand button, and then we'll call on people in that order. Um, and then again, if you're unable to get off mute, you can always post your questions or feedback in the chat. So with that, I will stop sharing and then hand it over to Sheila. Thanks, Tiara. Everybody see that? Good morning. Um, so excited to be here. My name is Sheila Seiden, and I started Resource Strategies in 2017 to help mission-driven leaders lead from well-being and leader culture after 30 years in leadership roles creating social impact. Today, let's talk about the biggest hazard and top skill for, lead, for sustainable leaders. Social impact creates dream jobs because they have high ROI, ripples of impact, and people want to make a difference in the world with their work. Let me tell you a little story. I was at one of my favorite dream jobs, and I was sitting at my desk, so many deadlines, and my calendar went fuzzy. All my deadlines fell out of my head. My, my mind went completely blank. The desk phone rang, and it was my board president who was collaborating with me on my phone, on my desk, it buzzed, and it was my dad's assisted living, and they wanted me to solve so many problems for him. I couldn't take any call because I just had flatlined in my head, and at that point, I knew that my rope was no more, and I was out of capacity to be keeping all of my plates in the air. Capabilities that made me good at managing a lot of moving parts were maxed out. I was in the weeds and my brain was in a swamp. How did that happen? Spoiler, resistance is futile when you're tolerating the situation. Resilience is in response. Response requires a very specific skill set that I did not have. And I really had to hunt down those skills. In a nutshell, what happened, I lived out the full experience of Astro Teller's change model. Let's take a look. We have time. We have change. Change requires figuring out a lot of different things, making all kinds of new decisions, learning all kinds of stuff, and change requires a lot of thinking. Over time, change and complexity come from family, the world, the job. We have to adapt. Leaders on the call today, what is inside this trend line for you? What change is compounding in your world? I invite you to take some notes on your reflection. Tolerating can come naturally, but tolerating will not help you deal with complexity. Enter stage right, me, you, doing our best, doing what needs to be done. How do we know we're adapting at the rate of change around us? For me in 2015, lifestyle job in a complex and changing industry suddenly met the complex and emotional chaos of elder care needs. Purpose-driven leaders like my clients are going for ripples of impact. Then along comes remote workplace productivity, hiring and onboarding remotely, and attrition. 2020 on, pandemic. Supply chains, great resignation. What next? In my own experience, my source fried, me. My adaptability declined because I was maxed out. I learned firsthand that stress is real, physical, physiological, and emotional. 
Before that, honestly, I did not believe in stress. I really didn't. It's your body and brain both overwhelmed. You might have decision fatigue, emotional exhaustion, a short fuse. And my story is not unique. Many mission-driven leaders have a blind spot about stress. <sighs> Just thinking about stress can actually make you stressful. And that's a fact. Let's take a deep breath and shake it out. The question I'm asked most is how can I navigate change and conflict in a cool, calm manner? First, I believe it starts with sustainable you. And second, success in complexity also depends on a shift to leader culture. In traditional leadership, few people have all the answers and experts give everybody all the answers. This works in a low complexity, little change environment. Make a shift to powerful generative questions and discover that many can have answers, parts of answers, and we can create new solutions. Leader culture means collaborative workplaces, collective wisdom, and creating practical solutions for doing business as a force for good. My clients want to create something new, new behaviors, self-awareness, intentional company culture. At the same time, they're creating something even bigger, sustainability, not depletion, regeneration, not exploitation. Ripples of impact ROI and two other vital ingredients sustainable you and leader culture. This is resource strategies. The first step to working with me is to schedule a clarity call, a strategy conversation where we activate inquiry, a whole person vision, and we aspire to evolve. Thank you for coming to my presentation today. I look forward to your questions. Wow, that was amazing. Thank you. Yay. Woo. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that that whole format of the presentation. I'm I'm very impressed with the intro and the hook and then stopping the video, you know, that switch up. I I learned a lot. So thank you, Sheila. Thank you. Um we'll get into Q&A now. Um again, just use the raise hand feature under reactions um or post your questions or comments in the in the chat. Adi, let's start with you. All right. So, you know, I'm new here. So I I would assume that the purpose of the presentation is to present what you do so we can help you or understand what you do. I mean, I just want to make sure that I'm, is that okay. So I thought the presentation was really good. I mean, I really like the personal story because there was a lot of, con there was a connectivity there, right? So, okay, you know what you're talking about. You've been there. Um, and I also like how you paused the presentation, you got the attention of all of us, then you went back. So I thought it was a really good presentation. My question, when I was looking at it, and actually made me think about my own presentation or present about my business is, do you think that um, creating some kind of a type of business owner or leader that you want to talk to will be appropriate at the beginning. So there is more of an identification, meaning like, let's say if I look at that presentation and I'm, the I'm your potential client, I will go, oh yeah, this is me, you know, in terms of, because I can identify, like the identification was with whom you were, right? And what happened to you. So that, that for sure created it, but I thought maybe, taking it, I mean, that was just my, my thinking. That's why I'm asking for what you think in terms of taking it to maybe a little bit more of a broader type of like, if you are, you know, a leader in such and such company, or if you are this, or if you are that, because that will also help me understand who your ideal client is. So if I meet somebody like that, I can then send them to you. So that would be my suggestion, my question more than anything. Great, thank you, Addy. Um, yeah, that's always actually the question. So I have approached that by going where the people I want to work with are, and those are sustainable leaders. So whether it's for-profit or nonprofit, 
I go to where the um, the people are. So it's um, less of a mass marketing idea, more targeted audience, and then message that is what I do. That makes sense. So you already go there and it's already your city that, that is being shown to somebody you already identified as somebody that you would like to work with. Yeah. Or a group, uh -huh, a group. that has okay. those people. Makes sense. Okay. And just from my understanding, who, who are those? Like, who do you want to be connected to? Um, people who are making ripples of impact, people who are doing, you know, purple people, profit, purpose type work, sustainability work. Conscious capitalism, um, zebras, um, B corps, people. Um, who are the other people like that? Great. Oh, no, clubs people. <laughs> Social impact people. The good people. The good <laughs> people. Make a difference. Yes. Yes. Awesome. Thank you. It's the good people that burn out. Yes. Yeah. The other ones don't burn out. They're like machines. <laughs> <laughs> That was a good question, Addie. Um, and just to add a little bit more, um, so you're going to the those groups of people, um, but for for some, I'm I love referring people. Um, so with Addie, kind of adding that like description of that person, that would help um, people bring those you know introductions to you as well. Um, so I definitely understood that part of it because then I can clearly identify oh this is who you're looking for like when you said zebras and so now I know who to to send your way um awesome great question. basically people who are who say I'm in the weeds I'm so stressed out I want my company to do have a better culture that supports me so I'm not doing it all yep makes sense awesome Zucky Hey, Sheila. Um, so, so having seen your other ones, I can tell you that this, this particular um, presentation was very on point, very, uh, seemed like you were well rehearsed and your timing was really good. Uh, 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 like me, you in the past have gone over. Today, you were fantastic in your timing. So you're getting better at your presentation and, and, and planning it out. So congratulations on that. That's great. Um, and uh, I have a question about, you showed us this graph and I, I love graphs. I'm a graph kind of guy as a scientist. Um, what, if, what if it's not a linear relationship between time and change? What if having too much time, for example, causes you to um, blow things off? You know, if, you, if you're looking at that graph, uh, are there any other shapes to the curve that you might be able to respond to? And does that exist? Uh, I, I don't know. I'm just wondering. Well, well, for sure, because that curve is just a two by two. <laughs> it's a our lives are a three D model. Uh, but I would also say that um, I have been recuperating from burnout all this time, and I was super good to go for 2019 at the end of 2019. And I guess we all know what happened then. Another curve. That's how the line went all wacky. So. <laughs> I mean, it's like those two presentations. That's why I said, oh my God, later. It was like, I did not have clarity. My brain was not even working yet because cognitive overwhelm is real. And um, so, yeah, for sure. It's really more like uh, like a like a XYZ box for that graph. Thank you. Thank you, Zaki. Uh, Amanda. All right. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Thank you. I was like, wait, that kind of did sound like my voice, too. It did a little bit. I... <laughs> Sorry about that. Hi, Sheila. Great to hear your presentation. Thank you so much for sharing with us uh, what you do. Um, just kind of circling back on what you said about your ideal client, um, I also just had a gleaning moment of like, what I saw was mid-career um, person. So that take it or leave it, but I saw a mid-career person, maybe a little bit, I identified with it being in nonprofits and being uh, you know, just so driven towards the mission that I wasn't taking care of myself. So there might be um, 
marketing um, marketing things that mm. you can you can glean from this three hours of talking so far this morning already. And so I'm I'm apologizing for my lack of words right now. But um, yeah, mid career was something for ideal client, and then um, getting just a little bit more crystal clear on that um, might be beneficial, just so that the person like. Tayara in the room who wants to, and I do too, and you know, I'm networking all the time. I want to be like, oh, this person, when I meet her, I need to attach, you know, make an intro to Sheila. So just giving us a little bit more information about who that person is um, would be helpful for a group like us. And then I also kind of wanted to know in the presentation too, um, your offer stack and kind of how, so we got a glean into that we have your diff discovery call is the next step, but I didn't really know, like, so I'm, you know, giving you somebody who I've met. So I'm attaching my re reputation to your information. I just need a little bit more information about what you're going to do with the person in order to make that connection. Can you share a little bit about that with me? Sure. Yeah. Uh, well, mid-career is really good. Um, also retirement, um, so uh, basically I've worked with all sorts of people <laughs> who wanna make a difference. And that's why I kind of go in with the, go where the people are. And um, for sure, anybody who's in a transition period uh, is a great candidate. And my approach is really around having that first conversation as far as the, the offer stack. Like I am really interested in talking one-on-one -on -one with people because that's where the uh, connection is. And uh, so far I've really worked with people over 12 week um, coaching engagements. I really like working one-on-one -on -one with people. And I know the next thing people say is you should do group, group coaching. <laughs> My goal though is to work one-on-one -on -one with people. And then um, when they have teams, work with the team as a facilitator to um, help create that intentional culture. And so that's, that's like the progression that is my ideal progression. And maybe over time, group, co group coaching will become a thing. But um, right now, that's my focus is one-on-one -on -one and then work with the team through facilitation. But I'd love to talk with anybody who's in a transition. I've, like I mentioned, I kind of focused on dream job. And I've had, every time I've made a transition, it's been about getting closer to purpose and closer to what is important in the world and to me. And I think that that's the crux to the whole resource strategies concept is how are we more true to our purpose? How do we fulfill the purpose? What do I need to do? How do I need to be? How can I sustain myself? Does that answer your question? Thank you. Thanks. Awesome. Awesome, thanks, Amanda. Um, and I don't want to mispronounce your name. Can you tell me how to say it? Am, am I, are you talking to me? Yes. Hi, I'm Shika. Hi, <laughs> this is my first um, 1 million cup um, Zoom call. So I'm very excited to be okay. here. Actually, uh, thank you so much, Sheila. That was such a wonderful presentation. Actually, uh, my question was very much similar to Amanda's question. So. Um, uh, so you've kind of answered that question, but I do want to mention that when you were talking about your company, it somehow reminded me of uh, Ariana Huffington's Thrive Global. Uh, mm -hmm. Thrive Global is also dedicated towards uh, um, uh, really helping people overcome burnout and stress. And she's really trying to build a culture where people are not getting consumed by the hustle culture and they're trying to lead a more intentional life. So Amanda's question was, uh, that, you know, uh, when you talk about the strategy or the holistic approach that you're going to apply towards attaining that goal. So you already answered that. So um, now I think I'll just ask, uh, you know, we live in a virtual world today. Do you, do you think um, doing such an, you know, because this is a person to person uh, connection, right? So do you think being in a virtual world that is a challenging time for you to really build a connection with your clients and really make an impact? Like, is it an obstacle or uh, how can you use it or optimize this platform to really make an impact? Yeah, it's a great question. And I just like to say Ariane Huffington was one of the first to really bring up 
burnout. And what happened to her was she was at work, you know, overtime, et cetera, all the time. She literally crashed onto her sink and cracked her head because she collapsed. So talk about not believing in stress. <laughs> That's how far it went for her. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm counting, I'm actually counting on the virtual environment because I moved to the beach <laughs> and um, I have found that Zoom works really one, really well for one-on-one. -on -one. And um, so yeah, great question. And, and um, it, it also makes it easier for clients to attend rather than, you know, driving around to park and go have a one hour session. It's just like, wherever we are, we can have our session. Um, so yes, definitely doing it in the virtual world. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. And welcome to One Million Cups. Yes, welcome, Sheikha. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you. Good morning, Jessica. Good morning. I am walking, so have everything off. Um, Hi, Sheila. Um, so at one point you had um, been negative uh, and it really detracted from your, it was during the questioning, so it wasn't during your presentation, but you were like, people who aren't looking to save the planet are, well, oh, they, yeah. they don't have burnout and they're, and I was like, whoa, what? And it was just a big red flag, like one, you never know the people that look like they've got nose to the grindstone but they're looking to pivot into an arena like you're talking about. And mm -hmm. so don't, don't be careful of the assuming um, you look point. like this. So, so anyway, it just was a big red flag to me, but I love what you're saying. So I think that it was a great presentation and just that caught my, my attention. Yeah, no, thanks for bringing that up, Jessica. I, I was being sarcastic, which is not good. <laughs> just be careful. You never know who takes that really. <laughs> Yeah, it's really true. Thanks, Jessica and Zucky. Yeah, so listening to, uh, uh, is it Adi? Yeah, listening to her, um, I, I, I think that I kind of got this, you, you, I'm reading this from, because I, I took some notes. Um, <clears throat> that initial consulta consultation is an evaluation so that you can personalize what you're creating for the, for the client. Is that correct? Well, um, the very first meeting with someone would be a would be a consultation where you would figure it out. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So once that's done, I know that everyone's different. Then, so do you have a pricing plan? I don't, I'm not asking for the actual numbers, but are you? Do you have a set list? Do you have an hourly rate? Uh, is it subscription based? How, how is your model there for bringing in the income? Yes. Um, currently, I'm doing the 12 week um, engagements. And I found that 12 weeks is a good time for people to, <clears throat> uh, one of the things in that initial strategy call is to really identify a coaching objective and what that objective is gonna be for the person. Because I have a, a mapped out week by week program that um, I provide. Sometimes people are really into it and some people use it for just like, oh, that's interesting but, and they're really focused in on what they're doing. So it's not super stringent. It's very based on what the person is trying to do. And so that first call is really about what that person's trying to do. And um, so that we could identify that objective that we're gonna stick with over time. Great question, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Um, does anyone else have any other questions before we go into breakout rooms? Well, thanks for all your questions. I really appreciate it. Nice, actually I'm skipping a step. Um, one more question for you, Sheila. <laughs> what can the One Million Cups community do for you? Well, I think you've been doing it <laughs> over time <laughs> and um, I just want to thank you for your consistency, and I know the organizers do so much. Um, but you know, really uh, taking the time to create uh, something to deliver to a general audience is super helpful, and I really appreciated all your questions. Uh, one thing I've been trying to do, or not trying, but you know, putting out there is um, a happy hour for people who are interested in this idea of um, 
sustainable leadership and uh, making a difference. And that's on the third Thursdays of the month. And I would love to have you come this month. It's, it is in person in San Francisco. So it'll be next online in May. Okay. And I post, I do post it usually in your social medias. Perfect. I've been wanting to attend one of those. So perfect. Oh, mark the calendar third Thursday in May. Okay. Got it. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you again for taking the time to create your presentation and to share uh, resource strategies with us. We really appreciate it. Um, and we open the invite to everyone else here on the call to apply to present as well. Um, so similar, similarly to what Sheila just went through, you can do the same thing with your business. Um, all you need is to be trying something new, um, whether that's the business itself or something new in your business, willing to ask for help and um, the want to learn. And the application takes just a few minutes. It's super simple. And um, then we do an onboarding and then um, you get coaching as well, if you'd like. Um, ways to get involved with One Million Cups. Again, we're always looking for volunteers. So just email us or um, uh, chat us here um, on Zoom to, to see if there's something specific you wanna help with um, or see where we can um, use your skills. And again, the link tree is in the chat. This is where you'll get access to all of the links that you would ever need for One Million Cups Seattle, um, including the link to RSVP for the in-person next week, April 13th at Expansive. Um, and we will be live streaming the presentations for, for those of us um, who cannot make it, um, but in person at the Expansive in Pioneer Square. And I will get um, breakout rooms set up. Um, there's no specific time to leave. You can kind of have a free pass whenever you need, need to, to head out. Um, but we, I'll open these up just so that we can get a little more intimate conversations. 